The first step in working with the hollow fiber bioreactor cartridge is to attach it to the reservoir bottle and set it up for pre-culture. Prior to working with the cartridge, it's important to be prepared. We want to have plenty of 70% ethanol on hand, keep the area nice and clean. We want to have our reservoir cap autoclaved with the silicone tubing already attached, bottle of PBS, our cartridge, some needles with a blunt end, 60 mil syringes, some pipettes, and a 50 mil conical centrifuge tube. We also want to have plenty of alcohol pads on hand. We do want to remember that it's not the application of alcohol that it sterilizes, it's the evaporation. The cartridge comes to you double bagged, so there's no problem with opening up the outer bag. Everything will still remain clean and sterile inside. In between the bags, you'll find your two pieces of silicone tubing. You get two fresh pieces of tubing with each cartridge. You can reuse them, but you might as well use new ones each time. So first what we want to do is prepare a bottle of PBS. We like to use PBS for the first step of the pre-culture as the cartridges and the fibers come co-extruded with a material called PVP or polyvinyl pyrrolidone. It's an FDA approved blood expansion product and kind of like glycerin. It renders the fibers hydrophilic but will prevent cells from attaching so we want to rinse it off prior to inoculating the cells. We're going to want to prepare 50 mils of PBS in our conical centrifuge tube in order to fill the extra capillary space with it after we attach the cartridge to the bottle of PBS. We found that PBS is a little more effective at removing the PVP than straight cell culture media. The pre-culture is intended to condition the cartridge to equilibrate the fibers cover up all the charged sites with uh, protein and we're going to do first 24 to 48 hours of PBS followed by one change of media without serum and then one change of media with serum for a minimum of 24 hours. At the PBS stage we can allow the cartridge to pre-culture for as long as one is required to do so uh, 24 hours to several days if necessary. We have the reservoir cap prepared. We want to cover up the ends with aluminum foil and also the short pieces of silicone tubing so that we can safely remove it from the autoclave bag without touching anything. Let's screw the cap onto the bottle of PBS. Now we can remove the cartridge from the inner bag. There are lure caps on all the open fittings on the cartridge, so there's no worries with opening up the bag uh, and contaminating anything by touching it. So we use this pair of scissors to open up the bag and remove the cartridge. Here we have our loop of silicone tubing to provide gas exchange and we can see the two one-way check valves which is how we generate the flow rate when the duet pump squeezes on the pump tubing. It doesn't matter which tubing we connect first and even though they've been pre-sterilized by gamma radiation I like to spray it down with a little more alcohol and wipe it down with an alcohol pad and it doesn't matter which tubing we connect first, but I do like to start with the rear short piece of tubing so that I don't interfere with it when I'm connecting the other piece of tubing. I like to give it a little bit of a back spin so that the tubing does not get kinked once it's put into place. These connections will not be removed, so we do want to make sure that they're nice and tight. And again, a little bit of backspin so there's no twisting. Make sure they're nice and tight. And now we're just going to squeeze on the pump tubing. And we can see that air is being pushed through the cartridge by evidence of the air bubbles showing up in the bottle of PBS. We want to continue squeezing the tubing until the air bubbles stop. 
This doesn't take too long, but I find sometimes my fingers do get a little tired doing all this squeezing. All right, so the air bubbles have stopped. So we filled up the flow path tubing and the interior of the fibers with PBS. However, now we need to fill the extra capillary space with PBS. This is where the 50 mil conical that we filled before with PBS comes into play. We want to close the left end port slide clamp and then the right end port slide clamp. Whenever we take lure fittings off of the side ports, we want to be sure that the slide clamps on the side ports are also closed in case there's any pressure inside the extra capillary space and media will come out onto the lure fittings. This is a potential source for contamination. We have a nice long blunt 18 gauge needle. It's not necessary to use a blunt needle if they're hard to come by, but they are a little safer to work with. It's also good to have them at least an inch and a half long, if not longer. In this case, it's two and a half inches long. This makes it easy to get into the 50 mil conical. And we're going to fill this syringe with approximately 30 milliliters of phosphate buffered saline. The volume inside the extra capillary space is about 20 mils, but we'll find that the fibers themselves will absorb a certain amount of liquid. So we want to make sure that the extra capillary space is completely filled with PBS. Now, since it's a blunt needle, we can safely cover it up. This is how we can remove the needle. And we're going to spray the lure fittings down with a copious amount of 70% ethanol. In some areas and in the summertime, you can find also yeast and fungi and other types of spores and alcohol will not kill yeast spores and bacterial spores. It may be a good idea to get a dilute bleach solution equal parts bleach and equal parts vinegar, approximately half a cup per gallon. And this can also be used to kill spores of yeast and fungi uh, and the like, although generally this should not be a problem. I'm going to attach a second syringe to the right side port. With the end ports closed, We'll now open the side ports and fill the extra capillary space with PBS and tilt it up so that the air goes into the right syringe first. We want to slowly fill up the extra capillary space and then as soon as we see liquid showing up in the right syringe, that means the extra capillary space is filled. Now in this case we're going to have a little bit of extra volume. This is not a problem. With the 20 kD molecular weight cutoff, it's easy to express excess media through the fibers and back into the reservoir bottle. And this is how we'll be performing our harvests and our cell inoculation. In the case of the 5 kD molecular weight cutoff, it is more difficult to get significant volumes of media across the fiber. So at this point, we would simply remove the syringes and discard the excess PBS. But we'll just show you how we can get rid of excess media out of the syringes. Be sure to refer to the FiberCell Quick Start Guide and the manual for complete directions as to how to perform the pre-culture. Again, we'll want a minimum of 24 hours with the PBS. We'll want a minimum of 24 hours with basal media, and then a minimum of 24 hours with complete media prior to cell inoculation. And it's quite important to not forget to open up 
the left hand and port slide clamp. This is usually the last maneuver that's performed and sometimes it's easy to forget it. I like to put a little bit of squeezing action onto the pump tubing prior to putting the cartridge into the duet pump just to ensure that we've got good flow through the cartridge. We're ready to put the cartridge into the duet and start our pre-culture.